Hi there, Nathan Patrick Taylor here. So for some time I've been meaning to do some videos that are basically, I'm calling them power reports, but I've wanted them to be more than just covering Power BI. I also want to talk about AlterX, I want to talk about Data Robot, and really any other business intelligence or uh, reporting tools that, uh, that I come across that I want to cover. So this is the inaugural video to do a little bit of a report out on what's going on. I really don't know how often I'm going to do them, if it's going to be every week, uh, bi-weekly, once a month, I'm not sure, but whenever there's news to report, I hope, uh, I hope to put out a video and to talk about it. Uh, and really, the design is sort of to be a little bit conversational, a little bit informal and just quickly cover the things that uh, come about uh, over the weeks and, uh, and new feature releases. So that's sort of the design of this. So with that in mind, I'm in this report, I just want to stick to Power BI since there was a release this week and run through some of the important things that came out and some of the new features. So starting off, uh, there was a release, I think it was on the 5th of February, uh, that I downloaded. Actually, for some reason, the link inside Power BI that says there's an update available uh, didn't show up inside Power BI when I loaded it on Tuesday. So I went out to the website and downloaded it manually and was able to get to the download. And then immediately, I think the next day or a day after that, uh, on the 7th, there was another update right away that was available. I'm sure there was probably some minor fixes in there. Uh, Microsoft decided to release an update for. So anyway, I've got the got that version of it downloaded and uh, reviewed the release notes that were put out by Microsoft and just wanted to touch on the things that I thought were most important. So first off, there's a new multi-select uh, feature inside charts where you can select a chart data point, hold down the control key while you click and it will support the highlighting of that particular data point across charts. So in essence, you can select multiple items within a chart and basically have that cascade through the data points and preserve it across charts. Prior to this feature being released, if you clicked on more than one data point across charts, it would only select the most recent item that you clicked on. So that's kind of a new feature. I thought it was interesting. I have a video out on that uh, you can review as well. The second item that's really interesting is the uh, synchronization of slicers, just called Sync Slicers for short, across multiple pages inside your Power BI report. So I, in my example, I've got a video up on this as well, where you can select uh, an item uh, in a slicer and have it apply to another page in your report, and then those two slicers stay synchronized. With the option to be able to have that slicer be visible or have it not be visible. So a really cool feature. And then another thing that the community has been asking for, I personally haven't used it that much, but uh, the ability to put a numeric range slicer on the report and have it snap to whole numbers. This feature is in preview. So you have to go into the file menu, into options, the preview features category, and click the checkbox for it to turn it on, and then it will show up for you. All right, there's a number of other reporting features in there. Uh, there's some faster geocoding for Bing Maps and some other items uh, that, that I'm not going to cover here, but you can check out as well. And then there's a really neat chart. A uh, number of chart visualizations were released, one in preview for organizational custom charts. Uh, but the one that I particularly found useful for me was the As Timeline chart, something that I've been wanting to put on to our Power BI reports, our team tracks uh, our projects in a timeline on SharePoint. And so I'd like to be able to display that visually when I have to report that out to our executive team. So uh, that's definitely a chart that I'm going to be uh, using in this release. There is improvements for SAP HANA. I'm a huge fan of SAP HANA. We don't use it where I work, but I think the technology is brilliant. It's also a preview feature that you have to check inside the option settings to get it to work. A uh, couple other things I wanted to cover, uh, open and save performance has been improved. I've noticed that significantly. One of the things about Power BI, when you open it, it opens a new instance of Power BI. Uh, rather than having it, if you open two or three reports, having it be tabbed reports, it's opening multiple versions of, of or instances of Power BI. So these open and save much faster than they did before. The also uh, the show items feature has been improved quite a bit. 
uh, or show no items, I should say, if you're using that particular feature. And then the last one of interest to me is uh, being able to persist filters that users select inside the Power BI service. So if they go into one of your dashboards or reports, probably reports specifically, and they filter out uh, an item inside a chart, close down the web browser and then open it back up again, it didn't preserve or persist the filters for that user in, in that particular report. This is a Power uh, BI service feature that's going to be released in the future and it's available now for you to check it out. So that's my quick run through of all of the updates. Sticking to Power BI this time, I hope to have some updates for Alteryx here in the future. They have a new release coming out, uh, should be quarter one. So we'll, maybe the next report we'll see that come out. As always, if you like these videos, please subscribe, toss a comment in there, let me know what you think. I'd be happy to cover any other comments as well. So thank you.